I honestly am learning a lot right now, and I hope you are too. This is the stuff I wish I knew how to do years ago. This is, this is training me as much as it's training you. That's what excites me about this channel. The obsessive TP. Okay, I think I'm recording. Sorry guys, uh, my A7S decided to not charge its own batteries in the battery charger. So we're on the iPhone today, but it's no excuse to not film a video just because your camera hates you. So I hope it's framed right. I really can't see very well. Uh, I don't have a monitor. I don't have a confidence monitor on my iPhone. But we're hoping that you guys, this frame looks beautiful. Today's a really cool video. Today we're gonna go over false color, what it is, how to use it, and we're gonna see some examples from popular movies, popular shows. It's one of my favorite tools to use on set for exposure. I also use it during color correction so I can see the levels of exposure between scenes, make sure the cameras are syncing up as far as exposure goes, helps you reference what a day interior is exposed at versus a day exterior, or a night exterior is exposed at versus a night interior. And it's a very, very simple, very useful tool. I would call this tool one of the secrets of a cinematographer, one of the secrets of a director of photography, because a lot of people, way too many people, and me sometimes, definitely early on, less now, but too many people expose just using their eye. Maybe they're looking at the stoplights on the monitor to make sure they're not under or overexposed. As far as the image goes, they're not losing quality, but they have no idea what the skin tone is exposing at, and that is the most important part of your scene is your skin tone. You want to dial that in, make sure it's consistent, make sure it's exposed correctly so it can look as good as it should. So let's dive in. First off, what is false color? So false color is a scale. You can see it on the screen. We use it on set right on our Flanders monitor and it shows you between zero and 100 10 levels of exposure. It's basically just taking your image, taking the bright parts, making them white, taking the dark parts, making them black. There's a lot of different scales of exposure. Sometimes they have just a sliding scale of color from dark blue to bright yellow to red to white. What I like is how the Flanders AM210 does it, which it's just these set colors. You have your blacks, you have your blues, you have your greens, and then you have your grayscale between 55 and 65 IRE, which is what you want your skin tone set at. And then you have your yellows, your oranges, your reds, your whites. Between zero and 10 IRE is usually just gone. There's not much detail there. It should be the shadows of your scene. It should be maybe a black shirt. I know right in here, this is all black on the false color scale. I've probably said the IRE values about a billion times. IRE stands for the Institute of Radio Engineers. It's just the people way back in the day that came up with this scale. It's not some fancy word for anything. So if I say IRE values, all I'm saying is the scale from zero to 100. 100 being white in your frame, zero being black in your frame, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All those are just in between exposures between pure black and pure white. So I've talked a lot about this being a secret tool for a cinematographer, and it really is because none of us have a perfect eye. We don't know exactly by just looking at an image if the skin tone is perfectly within that 55 to 65 IRE value. You can guess, but once you hit that button on the monitor or once you turn it on, the plug-in on your software, it's just that extra level of Yes, this is perfect. I'm hitting the skin tone perfectly. It really just gives you that extra level of confidence on set and that the director is gonna be pleased because that's one of your biggest jobs. I would call this a secret sauce. I really would. It makes you feel like you are doing your job to the T. Now, I talked a lot about the IRE values between 55 and 65 being perfect skin tone. Now, some people will say it should be at 70 for good skin tone, but that's pretty bright. That's a little bit above the normal scale. Cinematic video a lot of times has it just under 55 IRE, maybe like 50 or 45. So now this is really cool. We're gonna go through six different scenarios in movies and we'll be able to see 
what the cinematographer had exposed the skin tone level at, we can see exactly what they exposed at by using this tool. It's a really cool tool. So my false color plugin for Premiere is called False Color, and it is by Time and Pixels. I'll link the link to this plugin down below. I think it's like 30 bucks, it's not too expensive. All right, so let's check the first scene out. This is a night exterior. We have our false color up. These are our values between zero and 100. And everything in between, the 55 to 65 range is that sweet spot, is that gray range. So this is 1917, and this is basically lit by nothing right here. I can't even, see. okay, there it is. There's this face. You can barely see the face just because of how it's exposed. And we're basically all black. You can see detail, you can see all those details, but when you turn on your false color, it's actually all black because it's between zero and five IRE. Most of our scene is between zero and five IRE. So that's crazy dark. I don't think I've ever exposed this dark, but it totally works in the scene because you get enough detail and you want to feel like he feels like he's basically blind, but you have just enough detail to make out what's going on. So it's not like, so it's not a podcast. So this whole scene is very dark. This is actually a really cool scene in the film. You can see this shot here. This is fire, basically, right? This orange glow. That is actually not very overexposed. It's actually exposed right in the 55 to 65 IRE. Even the brightest part of it is barely over, maybe 70. So this kind of tells you it's night. Also, just all the darkness in the sky. We're at about blue, we're at about 10 IRE. All that darkness is very clear that it's night, even though all of this is almost lit or almost exposed like daytime. Because that, those mortars are flying over, they're giving a sun-like brightness. Uh, but it did give away that it's night and how your mind believes that it's night is that the sky is basically black. Uh, the only black, actual true blacks in this scene are over here in the shadow. Well, this is really bright here. <laughs> Check this out. This, so these are actually, these flames are in the orange. About 90 IRE, between 80 and 90 IRE is most of these windows. The building is about 70 IRE, it's green. Right here is the 55 to 65 in the darker part of the building. Our character, if we don't have our skin tone at 55 to 65 IRE, for sure in this scene. The cinematic video is gonna break that rule a lot. The 55 to 65 IRE is basically like a well-lit interior or an exterior when you're in the sun. That's really where you're gonna hit the 55 to 65. Otherwise, you're gonna probably be under it because that's just natural. It's not natural to be have a super bright lit face indoors at night. Next one is a dusk exterior. So very similar, but a little bit different. This is Star Wars. Basically everything again is in the blue range. It's in that way darker 10 to 20 IRE. His skin barely breaks 30 IRE. The bright parts of his skin, even the moons are lower in like the 40 range. Suns, whatever they are, moon suns. Yeah, his skin, the brightest part of his skin, so a dusk exterior is right about, I'd say 25 IRE is where that's at. And then if they were a darker skinned person, this would be even lower because that's just how it works. You don't want to light a darker skinned person 55 to 65 during a daytime. They would probably look too bright for what their natural skin tone actually looks like. So this 55 to 65 rule does break down a lot in a lot of scenarios, but if you're lighting a normal interview, something outside, something bright, cheery, it's usually gonna be correct. All right, let's move on to night interior. So this one's different but similar because you can be a little brighter because you're using practicals, you're using lamps. You have a lot of light actually playing on you naturally. So that's why in these shots, we're actually breaking 30. We're heading towards 40 IRE in the skin tones here. Again, we can turn this on and off. See the background of her is actually really bright here. That's interesting. Cause we have these lights, these well lit walls and pillars. They're actually edging her out because she's darker than what's behind her. But her skin right there, yeah, is barely breaking 40 IRE. So that's a night interior, a normal lighting scenario for that. This seems like here is about the brightest part. She's probably right under a light. And yep, we're 40 to 50 there. We're headed towards 50 on the bright parts of her skin there. That's cool. This is helpful information. I honestly am learning a lot right now and I hope you are too. 
This is the stuff I wish I knew how to do years ago. This is this is training me as much as it's training you. That's what excites me about this channel. Night party scene exterior. So you're gonna have a lot more lights here. This is one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah, this floor is pretty hot here. It's actually 55 to 65. Let's see what our characters look like. Yeah, a lot of color. Since a party has bright lights like this, you know, he has this really, really strong edge on his hair. You would only see this strong of an edge, you know, usually the sun at daytime. But since we're dealing here with a party with a ton of lights, you can see the lights back here. Uh, it's working. It's actually brighter this time than the night interior that we just saw. Our skin tone, I think Margot Robbie here had the brightest skin tone, let's see. Yeah, that's the brightest we've seen. It's right about 40 to 50 right here. Now obviously her, her clothing here is up in the 50s. Actually, maybe it's more in the 70s. And that's just because that's the natural color of her clothing is brighter than say this or this or this. Everyone else is pretty much wearing black. That's why you're down in the zero to five IRE value because that's just the color you're wearing. It's not a bright clothing item. All right, next is day interior. We're definitely gonna get brighter here. Uh, although this is kind of a more dimly lit closet. So let's see where we're hitting. Yeah, we're just a tiny bit brighter than what we were just at because we're kind of in a dimly lit, we're about 40 to 50 again. But let's see what happens. She actually moves into the room here. And that's the final scene. That, we're just barely breaking 55 to 65 on the brightest part of her skin here. You see where it's turning gray? That means we're just in this range. That's the range you want to hit for like a normal interview bright day setup. And I think that frame looks good. It's just a little bit dark, but it makes sense for the scene because they're in kind of a more crummy part of town, a less well lit area. Most of feel very homegrown and very just homey. And I think they nailed it here with the exposure. Next is day exterior cloudy. All right, so here's where we're definitely gonna get brighter, but it's still cloudy. We don't have any super bright sun shining on our characters, but you see the sky actually is pretty hot here. These clouds are not at all overexposed. So maybe that's what they were battling with was that this being not overexposed means that our skin tone is just underexposed about the same as it was on the previous day interior. I think all this is about the same. The skin tone, actually the fingers here are breaking it a little bit. They're looking a little brighter. Here's her face. She looks a little brighter too. Yep, on her nose exposed perfectly and here exposed perfectly. So we're, we're right there. Here are the clouds. They're just barely clipping here, these white points. But it makes sense. Some people would go, but you're clipping. But it make, it's a bright part of the sky. It's pure white on these bright outlines of these skies, it's going to be pure white. It's going to clip, that's just normal. Now, if the whole sky were white, like these tiny little bits, if the whole sky were that way, you'd have a problem because you wouldn't have any detail to bring back. It would just be gone. You overexpose your shot, you know, there's no coming back from that. Day exterior sunny. Here's where we're gonna get the brightest, but honestly, we're not that bright. <laughs> We don't even see the edge from the sun. I think he's looking into the sun. Yeah, you can see his glasses. So the sun is looking straight at his face. And we're about the same. This is actually surprising to me. I thought that on a day exterior, we would have more of the 55 to 65 range in his skin tone. Does he have darker skin? A little bit, but not really. I would think personally that I would expose his face hotter than it is here but that's the choice they use. That is a more cinematic move. I think it is fine for the story. Sometimes you get more detail if your face is not overexposed or not even at 55 to 65 here. You get a little more detail. If you wanna blow out the face, kind of make it look smoother, more pleasing, then that's when you would go a little higher in exposure because that kind of blooms the face, makes it look a little more pleasing. On this example, you know, it's Walter from Breaking Bad. He's going a little crazy. I think they made the choice there to bring down that skin tone, not blow him out, not make him look pleasing. See more contrast in his face, the lines, the crow's feet, whatever it is in his face to make you really feel his age and that he's kind of going crazy. Anyway, that's it. I hope false color made sense to everybody. 
comment down below if you have any questions. Stay obsessed.